The October 2020 incident is in the news again as Amnesty International or a Libel's US report inaccurate. And the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, announced its plan to recommend voter registration. Plus, politics starts now. I'm Justin Akadori. The Amnesty International has said the United States could have taken more time to evaluate all available evidence before publishing its report on the October 2020 Lekki Tolgate shooting. The U.S. government in its 45th annual human rights report said information on the fatalities from the shooting remained fuzzy, noting that apart from Amnesty International, which reported 10 persons died during the event, no other organization was able to verify the claim. Now discussing with me is political analyst Adeyemi Saka. Adeyemi, many thanks for joining us on Plus Politics tonight. It's nice to be here once again. Yeah. I'm sure you have uh, seen and read the report uh, contradicting what Amnesty has said about 10 people dying. The U.S. came out with their own report and said that this, uh, uh, those claims could not be you know, verified. How, uh, how did that hit you when you read it? Well, um in diplomacy and um, in the diplomatic world and diplomatic cycle, you don't um, you don't say yes, you don't say no. So that's what the Americans, uh, the U.S. State Department reports, seems to me. And um, the U.S. report didn't say such incident didn't happen. Didn't say nobody died. Just said it was unverified. Unverified is probably yet to be ascertained. So over time, with time, maybe when more facts emerge. Um, they probably will have a recount of these earlier reports and or probably stand by it or justify the report. But um, we shouldn't um, delude ourselves. We, we, yes, when it comes to this government and probably those in power, when it comes to when pronouncement against this government um, comes from such quarters, they are quick to tell us that, yes, we have not surrendered our sovereignty to America and other international bodies, organizations, but it's so, it's so funny and hilarious that they are jumping out like at days with, um, jumping out like an excited, excited and you're in a chain chemical reaction. So, um, yeah, good news for them, with the time we tell. But um, I want people to know that there is an investigative journalist in Nigeria, um, allow me to mention his name, Fisayo mm. Shiyombo that did an exclusive, extensive and you know, detailed um, report on the, on the massacre incidents or whatever you are to get. And um, things, the facts are there. You see, it's, um, let's, let's, there's no one to talk about this that we won't talk about what happened that day. Mm -hmm. um, I think if anybody should be held responsible, we should hold the Lagos State government responsible for what happened at Lake Itoge. And the question is this, when um, in democracy, when, it, when, when you have to bring in the military to, to probably, you know, play a role in halting or curbing civil disturbance and unrest, they meet with the security team of the governor and the CP of the state. And that's where they point, the flash point, um, where they want the army or the military to go intervene. And now, we, we are only in Lagos. We are only in Lagos, we knew places that we were born in. It's a rare, Tipa Garage, Ketu, Ikurudu, Moshin. Not Lekki. And even that evening, while the soldiers were heading to Lekki, <laughs> we had people at Alausa yeah. in front of the government house, in front of the office of the Lagos State Government. They were not dispersed violently. And um, also, my knowledge when it comes to the role of military in enforcing curfew. Um, what they should have done as at that time, which is the standard rules of engagement for military, like military operation in such um, events, is um, they form two corridors. Yeah. yeah, they form two corridors. The first corridor barricading the protesters, then an outer corridor for them. And um, they wait, 
not to not 10 o'clock, not 12 o'clock. They wait at the expiration of the coffee, which is 6 a.m. And the commanding officer on ground, with the, with the, they pronounce their guilty in the presence of a magistrate that will be there. And anybody that charged at them will be shot at. Not shot to men, you'll be shot to kill. And they'll be dragged from the inner corridor to the outer corridor. And that will give the military or part of those present the, the right, the opportunity to now arrest as much as they can. And before they do that at daybreak, the power would have formed a perimeter around the disobedient um, crowd. Because what those people at Lekki, the civil disobedience, it's, it's not really a capital. You don't have deep, deep, they, they, they are, they are, <laughs> there are punitive measures in our Criminal Justice Act about civil disobedience, not shoot at them. Because, because I was really going to ask, uh, shouldn't we uh, as Nigerians be uh, questioning the authenticity of that report? Because uh, let me just read uh, some claims. It claims that uh, the military men were imposing curfew by firing into the air on one hand, and also said that uh, uh, they fired at protesters when criminal elements uh, penetrated into them. Yeah, I was going to come to that. I... If you look at the, pro the proceedings at the judicial panel of inquiry going on in Lagos State, a medical doctor from one hospital in Lagos State came out and during his testimony said um, pellets were extracted from victims that day. Oh. And um, Nigerian police doesn't use pellets. Nigerian army doesn't use pellets. Now, it brings us to we were there with locally made pistols or guns or abominations. If that means it's people that have a foreknowledge that there's going to be a curfew that day, that planted people with guns at Lekki. Because before, that, before the day of the coffee, even those at Lekki did not know there was going to be a coffee that day. No Until they knew. got there, no one knew. So it's the question of it's those that knew what they wanted to do, to give the army the justification to fire at those protesters, planted people with local limit pistols. Simple, it's logic. So it's invariably it was hijacked. It was hijacked. Okay. It was a setup. A setup. It was set up because if people at Lekki... Who from, set who up? Well, it's, 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 now, it's, it's up to Nigerians and people intelligent enough to connect the dots. Who knew there was going to be a curfew that day? Who pointed Nigerian army to Lekki? Who, show, who pointed Lekki to them? Why not allow, sir? Where they have, because, they, they, because in Nigerian, the laws are laws that has to do with treason. It says if you probably disturb the institution of government from functioning, that is treason. So those that allow us are even, are even more guilty than those at Lekki. Then I, I, another thing you should ask yourself is this. You're going to enforce curfew. Why, black, why, why the total blackout? It wasn't the billboard that, pro, that provides light for, 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 for that access. It is the street light part that high PP controlled by legal state governments. So who shut it off? Who turned it off? And in a military operation when there's, when there's total darkness, the military is going full bridge. Mm. So you don't pee on my face or on our faces and tell us it's raining. And um, if you look at our statements um, by the U.S. report, because there's, some, let's, you see, there's something called lobbying in international politics and diplomacy. Probably there's a lobbyist at work. Mm. Who is lobbying? Well, everybody needs to lobby. Because let me tell you the implications of what, what, is, of what would have happened if such a report doesn't come out. Mm -hmm. The Tucano jets will probably will still be held up, so I probably will not get it back. So you need to lobby. So invariably, are you saying the U.S. report is uh, somewhat and downplaying all of um, the issues and all of the things that came out from the Lekki shooting of October 20 last year? In all fairness, with, um, with all sense of respect and dignity to human lives, yes, it is. Mm. We shouldn't delude ourselves. We so so what do they stand to gain? Well, um, the country is still moving forward. The country is still moving forward, but is, will the country heal from what has happened? I would say no. The country moves forward and the uh, lives of um, innocent Nigerians are yet to be un um, accounted for. Well, um, you see, like I said, the country will move forward. Governors will move forward. International diplomacy and politics will move forward. But will Nigeria heal from what happened that day? Probably no. Mm. Because, they, they, they are, you see, if we don't tell ourselves the truth, we can't move forward. We can't tell ourselves where we were wrong and what we did right. And if you don't know where we went wrong, we cannot correct it. And you know, it, it started with um, the usual red marker, fake news, the army was not there, 
from okay, we were there, we didn't go with data. So in 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 law, if if you're could exam, could examining any witness and um, his testimony is um, tarries, and um, you find that um, what he said in, at a, at an instance is, doesn't corroborate his following statement or at a, at a later date, the judge strikes all his accounts off, and it's been considered uh, unreliable witness. So why should we believe people that have turned to be unreliable? Because if, if there, there are one million and one things we could have done, there are one million and one things could have been done after Lekki. What could, ha what could we have um, done right, you know, to maybe make up for, is there anything that could have been done really to even right all the wrongs of uh, last year, October 20? Yeah, there, there, there are some um, things that could have done if you want me to what we call freebies, I probably will give you freebies here yeah, for the Nigerian army or the Nigerian government. The first thing is there's a need for an apology to Nigerians about what happened that day. And you made a promise that never again in the history of this country would the army or any officer turn his gun on an innocent civilian. That is enough for us to move forward. And this is our mess, we have to clean it up. But you see, it's um if I'm not saying, if US report is saying it couldn't be verified. And Somolu, as the governor, that said nobody died. And on CNN said two people died. So you look at the lies and the consistency. Consistency and in lies, consistency in irregularities. And uh, we saw pictures. We saw live feeds uh, on that night. Uh, and no, we saw not, people. The, 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 the most idiotic statement you can hear in the 21st century is somebody telling you that an Instagram live video was doctored. Mm. That's, that's the most idiotic statement I've heard in the 21st century. Was it doctored while it was being recorded? So, you, you, you look at the insincerity. I, I would never cut someone loose slack in this as a governor of Lagos State. It's guilty, it's cool, people what happened at Lekki. Nobody should tell me it doesn't control the army. Nobody should tell me it was now. He pointed, his government pointed the army to Lekki. Mm. So he's responsible. And they should tell us if it's because, okay. Look at it. At Alausa, you had Nigerians. I won't say Lagosians. Nigerians protesting peacefully at um at what was it called? At Alausa, you saw a bus owned by Lagos State Government. Forget about the story that it's been franchised or somebody's controlling it. I've tried buying tickets to buy those bus. I've seen their staff wearing T-shirts or what that has Lagos State insignia on it of Lagos State Government. So the government is a stakeholder in that business. Of course. And the boss looking without. And then one of those guys was, was captured, his picture was widely circulated, it's called Osha. Till today, till we speak, Osha is still working for you on, on the streets of Lagos. Mm. But I mean, looking at all of this that has happened, eventually there were panels of um, inquiry in several states, uh, even in Lagos. Uh, would you really say, if you were to, you know, analyze um, all of the proceedings that have come out uh, from the judicial panel of inquiry, would you really say that uh, they have been uh, fair in uh, their discussion so far? Well, um, I think the panel, in my humble opinion and self-assessment, independent opinion, it's mm. not, I don't, and I would say this is me, my opinion, not out of Nigerians, I think the, the panel derailed. Derailed in what sense? When, when lost a bit of integrity or conviction it had it had on me when he heard the reopening of Lekki Toge. It's it's I think for me it was beyond them. They shouldn't have opened they it at have all, or when they were hasty in they their decision. Have such powers. Are they a court? Okay. The panel of inquiries are just meant to make pronounced pos um, positions and probably recommendations to be taken up by courts. Hmm. So why do you? so it, sh it shows that that to me proves that the panel was set to to an expected end. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. Yes, you see, I tell people, one of the free tips I give people, especially people that are um, spokespersons or aides to public office holders, I tell them if you want to lie, lie with some truth. So at every point in time you are lying, the truth is always constant. So trying to relate it to what happened at the panel, they did some things that were lofty, good, objective, so, they now hit the opening of the lucky to get under it. So, whether you like it or not, you still want to give them some credit because of the pronouncement of what they've said. Okay. 
But for me, they lost me, and they lost it when they said the Lekki Toge should be opened. I think if the, the agency or the body that owns them, um, the, the company that owns the Lekki Toge feels there's a need for it to be opened, it should probably yeah, should have you approved are the court. You are a Nigerian that you live in this country now. If you were to say or to uh, feel the pulse of the average Nigerian that uh, after this recent um, report by the United States, would you really say that uh, they are sort of um, opening uh, up old wounds uh, after all that has happened last year, uh, the um, Occupy Lekki Toge that happened again not so long ago this year, would you really say that uh, Nigerians have been treated badly? No, Nigerians have been treated badly for a very long time. And, um, it's so sad that people playing politics or going about this politics are not so smart about it, smart enough to go about it. You, I don't know, you've, you've, you've dug this up, you should expect counteractions and we go back and forth and people will still get angered. People will, get, people will show their grievances. I'm not saying take to the streets and destroy properties. People will show their grievances. People will want to push their case forward. People want to like establish their case. Mm. And we get to the stage, and at the end of the day, let's see, we'll, we get embarrassed for him. Okay, but going forward now, with all that has happened, uh, with uh, this report, uh, quote and unquote, and downplaying all of um, the issues uh, with the Nigerian police and uh, all the lies that have been told, uh, do you see a situation where the Nigerian would actually want to go all out to protest, you know, all of um, misgovernance, all of uh, the bad uh, things that are being meted out to them on a daily basis. What they did with Lekki is they didn't crush the will of Nigerians. They just pushed it forward. Mm. I'll tell you, the, the police is one institution that is seriously against reform. I don't know why. They are so used to the, their, their evil way of doing things. And I'll say that I'll stand by it. Police officers have pulled their service piece, sidearms, and what have you at me. And you're thinking, yeah, if that was not enough, February last month in Abuja, a police officer asked to point his rifle at me because he wanted to stop me. Yeah. And the question asked, why are you pointing a rifle at me? So these guys are not ready to change. These guys are against reform. And even the Sawolo as a governor that came up with an initiative, yes, was it yesterday that was widely celebrated that people should not have body cameras on and what have okay. you? Yes. Did you send police officer personnel at that show off? No, because they are against it. The police is against reforms. Forget about the English or the press releases or the radio station they said they've established. It's just pure rhetoric. These guys are not ready to change. A simple law would have empowered an avid Lagosian yeah. to put a, an avid policeman in check. Let the, national, let the state of assembly pass a law. Yeah. Let the National Assembly pass a law that guarantees every Nigerian the right to record the interaction with an avid police security agent or officer. And this will put an end to this madness. Okay. But your policeman is harassing somebody. You want to record you have been you have been assaulted sometimes. I I've, wit I've witnessed things like that happen in this country. So you imagine, uh, you, and the average policeman is angry that you're having a good life. I was I've, I've been at the end of it, so I can say this with 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 utmost conviction. I'm not bad mouthing the police. I'm not liberating giving them a bad name. Okay. But the police needs to change. The, 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 you see, how did we get here? People were peacefully protesting. And some, some people wanted to discredit we were bringing talks out to attack protesters. We saw it in Abuja. They came in SUVs, tinted, covered plates. We saw it in Lagos. They came in Lagos State Mass Transit or whatever. Mm. So why are, we, why, are we now like, why are we just being politically correct that we don't know where these things came from? Because Nigerians are still asking who ordered the shooting. No, obviously, when, when, you, when there's a military personnel on ground, that when with his live rounds and it's been shot at hmm. by, by standard training, it's meant to shoot back. Okay. So the question is, and it's not a question. Here lies your answer, or answers to the question you're asking me. It's those people that knew there was going to be coffee in Lagos State that day, that had security meetings that pointed lucky to people. We have we surely know those who planted people with guns at lucky. Hmm. Look, ask, look, don't look beyond them. Because you and I didn't know there was going to be coffee that don't say the governor announced at 4 p.m. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and so, so, so childish and so, so wicked and insensitive the, the pronouncement was, was you are not in the Lagos state that you've probably 
Maybe up to now, Agege was a mess because of the road construction going on there. You, you, mm -hmm. you had roads period. block, and you, you announced 12... There's no way Nigerians would have even gotten home before the, the curfew begins. So it shows you the wickedness of those in power. Mm. You've talked about uh, uh, the, Ni uh, the Nigerian government uh, trying to right the wrong by uh, apologizing to the populace and saying that uh, it would never happen again. But is that enough justification? And would it actually uh, calm tensed nerves right now, people who have actually lost uh, loved ones and even means of life? Let me, let, there's a saying in Yoruba, probably will spare the audience and I'll go straight to it. You catch a thief, you tell him to drop all his old and he drops it. You tell him to run, what else do you want? You accuse the government of being wrong. They accepted, they say you demand actions, they've apologized and they're making pronouncements and implementing policies to say yes, it will never happen again. What else do you think Nigerians will demand for? Mm. An average Nigerians also be treated with dignity. All right, uh, Yemi, I just want to ask one question now. Um, don't you think the Americans, uh, they need to update <laughs> maybe the report because uh, I still feel they need to explain you know, if they are telling us that uh, these claims cannot be verified, I, I want to, I want, I want to be able to understand why we have visuals of um, amputees, we have casualties, and uh, and they are telling us that soldiers only shot into the air. No, America saying that it's not, it's yet, it's not verified. They didn't tell you it didn't happen. So what does that even mean? Yeah, it's 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 like okay. It's not verified. It can still turn out. There are to be no verified. claims. There are no evidences the, or what. But can, we have people. We have the visuals. No, that can still be. That can still turn out to be a, very, a verified account with time over time. But why now? You know, the question is this: For now, it is not verified because of what is at their disposal. Let me give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. But at some point, it could still turn out to be a verified report or account of what happened that day. So if we still have how many years? Twenty ten. Are they playing for time or what exactly? Well, I, I was, I boldly um, became, I was boldly speculative when I said this is probably international law based at play. Mm. And if you look at the word, they didn't say it never happened. They didn't say it was falsehood or if it was a false account, they said it, it's unverified. It can still be verified some other time. So the American, the U.S. State Department was being careful, was being diplomatic when they said it was not verified. Because it, what, what stands on for a fight can still be verified tomorrow. Mm. In the, in, when, when there are veiled, updated reports on better resources or materials. So let's cut them some slacks. Cutting them some slacks. Now, as we wrap up now, this particular discourse, now, what do we begin to do as analysts, as lawyers? Uh, you know, do we need to provide them with uh, verifiable evidence or what exactly so that uh, we could actually get to the root? Because Nigerians actually need answers and families and need to be soothed and uh, we just need to get past this once and for all. I'll be religious and apologies to any, believer of any uh, believers of any other faith apart from Christianity. I'm saying this what the pastor said mm. while listening to his telecast years ago. He said nothing can be eaten forever. That the okay. only thing that can be eaten forever is what God hides. So as long as God doesn't hide it, it should be revealed. It's just a function of time. Mm. So it's just a function of time. Well, only a matter of time before we get to know the right answers and the main truths that uh, Nigerians are eager and, um, uh, you know, conscious, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, boiling to, to find out. Well, uh, we still have um, the Emisa car. We'll take a, a quick break and when we return, the Independent National Electoral Commission announces plan to recommence continuous voter registration. Stay with us.